The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to all of you today. Uh, a very special welcome back to Edwina. It is lovely to see you return from Australia safe and sound. And a very special welcome too to any other newcomers or visitors who are here. If you've not been here before or not for a very long time, please let us see you. <laughs> no, I don't think there's anybody I don't recognize at all, uh, unless you're hiding very effectively. Um, and a w welcome also to those who are joining us online. Today in our series of sermons on the sacraments, we are considering the sacrament of marriage. We give thanks to God for his grace shown to us through that sacrament. And we pray for all those who are married that that grace may continue to thrive in their lives. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name. Now and forever. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confirm our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor.
Lord, in our weakness, you are our strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, when we stumble, you raise us up. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, when we fail, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are the, the pioneer, pioneer and perfecter of our faith. faith. Set us on fire as your brave witnesses, ready to bear the cost of our discipleship. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, and I'll be reading verses 1 to 7. I will sing for the one I love, a song for his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now, you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. Then I have done for it. Sorry, what more could I have done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord God of hosts, and we shall be saved. Show the light of your countenance, O Lord God of hosts, and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt, you drove out the nations and planted it. You made room around it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The 
hills were covered with its shadow, and the cedars of God by its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea, and its tendrils to the river. Why then have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar out of the wood tears it off, and all the insects of the field devour it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold. Cherish this vine which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made so strong for yourself. Let those who burnt it with fire, who cut it down, perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you made so strong for yourself. And so will we not go back from you. Give us life, and we shall call upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, starting at verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, 
and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us they would be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endures the cross, scorning its name, shame, and sat down at the right hand of the God, of the throne of God. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter, beginning at verse 49. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said to his disciples, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, 
but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. We come today then to consider the sacrament of marriage. And before I say anything else, I have to acknowledge that uniquely amongst the sacraments, this one can cause just as much pain as joy. I'm fully aware that for many people, marriage brings great joys. But for many others, it does not. Those for instance, who have lost a marriage partner through death and still feel the pain of that loss. Talk about marriage brings back that pain. Those who have endured a very difficult marriage, those whose marriages have ended and who still bear the scars, emotional and often physical, that pain comes back when we talk about marriage. And also those who long to marry and it's just never seemed to happen. There is pain there as well. So I freely acknowledge and hear the pain which comes from so many people when we start to talk about marriage. But we still need to talk about it. What is marriage? In a legal, purely secular sense, marriage is defined as a legal contract entered into freely between two adults. The contract imposes rights and responsibilities on the two people. It regulates their behavior towards each other and towards other people outside the relationship. It provides a setting for the bringing up of children. It creates a family unit recognized in law. It creates a bond, a legal bond between these people. So we know that. And we also know that marriage is not a specifically Christian institution. We as a church have a lot to say about it, but we can't claim it as our own. Marriage goes back to the beginning of humanity, and it is practiced by people of all religions and people of none. It is practiced all over the world, in every culture, in every place. So it is a universal thing, and it is so because it is a good thing. It is good for us as individuals, and it is good for society as a whole because of the stability and the commitment which comes from it. So if marriage is such a universal thing and uniquely amongst the sacraments is something which is recognized way beyond the Christian church, then how can we talk about it in Christian terms? What have we got to say about it? Well, like so many things, God takes what is universally recognized and uses it as a means of his grace in our lives. In the same way that he uses the ordinary things like water and bread and wine in order to convey his grace into our lives, he also uses marriage. Let me read to you the, one of the paragraphs from the introduction to the marriage service in the prayer book. It says, Marriage is a gift of God and a means of grace in which man and woman become one flesh. It is God's purpose that, as husband and wives give themselves to each other in love, they shall grow together and be united in that love, as Christ is united with his church. Those first few words are the key thing. Marriage is a gift of God and a means of grace. What do we mean by that? It sounds lovely, doesn't it? But what does it mean? There's all sorts of things we can say about marriage from outside the Christian perspective and from within it. But I want to focus on two particular things. The first, how is it a means of grace in our lives? It is a means of grace because of the love that the husband and wife have for each other. 
The love of husband and wife is a window through which you can peer through and catch a glimpse of the love of God. The husband and the wife are the means by which God shows his love to the other. Just speaking from my own marriage, Dilly won't mind, my duty as a husband is to be the means by which God shows his love for Deline. My love for her is simply the vehicle that God uses in order to let her know how much he loves her. I myself then am like a living sacrament, an ordinary person, but called to show God's love. I become a means of grace in Deline's life, and vice versa. She is used by God in order that he may let me know how much he loves me. Her love shown to me is God's love shown to me. The couple become sacraments for each other. And in that way, the couple themselves and the people around who see that love can glimpse, just have a taste of the love of God. Now, of course, that sounds ideal, and it is the ideal, and we know that we fail again and again in doing that. So the glimpse that we get is never a perfect one, but it is a glimpse nonetheless. The sacrament of marriage is about more than simply a wedding day. In fact, the wedding service is not the sacrament at all. It is that lifelong commitment which is the sacrament. It is the married life which is the means of grace, rather than simply the service itself. So that is one way in which we regard marriage as a sacrament. It is God's gift to us because it is one of the ways in which we experience his love. But there is a second way. Marriage is not isolated from the other sacraments and particularly it is not isolated from our baptism. When you were baptized, you died and you rose again. At your baptism, you left behind the old way of life, the one which was self-absorbed, self-centered, only interested in your own particular priorities. That life died. And instead, when you rose from the waters of the font, the new life of Christ began in you, a life which is a life of love and service to others. Your Christian life, your path of discipleship, involves a daily dying and rising again, a daily decision to put off the selfishness of your own desires and instead give yourself in love and service to others. That daily aspect of our Christian life is focused very acutely in the sacrament of marriage because for those who are married, every single day is an opportunity and even a requirement that you die to your own selfish ways and give yourself in love and service to the other. In doing so, we walk with Christ. Paul writes to the Ephesians, and it was quoted in that introduction to the marriage service, that the, marriage, the married life is, reminds us of Christ's commitment to his church. Christ laid down his life for his church, his people. He didn't consider his own life to be worth saving. He laid it down freely on behalf of those he loved. Our call, our vocation, is to do the same in whichever state of life we are, married or not. But particularly within marriage, we have that vocation to daily lay down our own lives, to put aside our own selfish interests, and instead to focus on the needs of our partner. Is that easy? No, of course it's not. Do we always get it right? Of course we don't. Every day we fail in big ways or small ways. And so every day there is a need to repent and be forgiven. Every day there is a need to be willing to forgive when the other person has got it wrong. Every day then, in a sense, is a dying and rising again. Every day is a confession of sin and a receiving of forgiveness and a reconciliation. For those who are called to the vocation of marriage then, and it is a vocation, you are called 
to encapsulate in your married life what the whole of the Christian life is really about. That daily journey of becoming more Christ-like, of giving yourself and receiving the love of the other. Now, of course, it's so difficult, both in the love that you give and receive within your marriage and the way that you give yourself in service to each other. It can go badly wrong. If it's all one-sided, for instance, if all the giving is one way and all the receiving is the other, then it becomes very lopsided and causes great unhappiness and pain. When the two partners to the marriage don't have quite the same understanding of what it's all about, it can be a recipe for unhappiness. And many marriages don't survive as a result. But the fact that we're incapable of living up to that expectation doesn't take away from God's divine purpose for what marriage is. We have an ideal to which we can aspire, even though we know we will never fully manage to achieve it. In those two ways, then, marriage is a sacrament. Marriage is a means by which God pours his grace into our lives. Through the love that husband and wife have for each other, which is an expression of God's love, and through the daily path, sometimes difficult, of discipleship, the daily work of giving and uh, giving yourself in love, the daily task of sacrificing your own preferences and looking only to the needs of the other. It is hard. It's a vocation to which some are called, but not all. But for those who are called, it is a privilege. And it is one of the ways in which God pours his grace into our lives and allows that grace to be poured from our lives into the lives of those around us. What we are doing is participating in the love of God as Trinity. The love between husband and wife and children, if there are children, echoes that divine love of mutual love and giving which is at the heart of the Godhead, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is why the family is such an important unit within society and within our Christian understanding. Marriage is a gift, not to all, but to some. But we have to work at it. Forget the whole fairy tale thing of boy meets girl, they kiss, they get married, they have 2.4 children, they, get, they live happily ever after with never a raised voice or a cross word. Forget it. It never happens. Marriage, like any vocation, can be hard. But it is rewarding if you are called to it. And it is a means of God's grace in our lives. Amen. Let us stand and confirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. (laughs) 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we worship you and glorify your holy name. We thank you for this day. It is by your grace that we are here today. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for all the leaders in our ministry who are striving to let your word reach the whole earth. We pray for Margaret, our bishop, Tabo, our Metropolitan, and Andrew, our Rector. We pray for strength, wisdom, and steadfastness in their, in their different callings. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of the nations, the world over. Give them your wisdom and guide them in their ruling that they may promote peace and the well-being of everyone they have charge of. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray for all our parishioners at St. Margaret's, including our youths and Sunday school. Help us to bear good fruit and never be plucked away from you. Engulf all of us in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Today, we thank you for the beautiful sacrament of marriage. We thank you for all our married couples in this parish, whom you have blessed with this wonderful mystery of physical, emotional, and spiritual unity. May their union be a true reflection of the surpassing love that you have for your church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for those who have been in and out of marriages. We pray that they may have peace in the knowledge that there is a friend in Jesus who sticks closer than a brother. Heal those that are still hurting from such experiences and restore their joy through forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In this country, South Africa, Lord, we pray against gender-based violence. Protect and lead all those that are victims of this. We also pray for the perpetrators that they may see your light 
and desist from inflicting harm on others. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we know that you are good and that you hear those who call upon you. Give to us and to all people what is best for us, that we may glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand for the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory honor, thanks, and praise be given to you, creator of heaven and earth. When you made us in your image, creating us male and female, you gave us the gift of marriage. When sin marred that image, you healed our brokenness, giving your son to die for us. Therefore, we raise our voices with all who have served you in every age to proclaim the glory of your name. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Margaret, our bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour taught us. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ?
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to share his feast. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Please stand. Give thanks, for the Lord is gracious. All praise to you, our God and Father, for you have fed us with the bread of heaven and quenched our thirst from the true vine. Hear our prayer, that being grafted into Christ, we may grow together in unity and feast with him in his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit. We've got quite a number of birthdays to celebrate today uh, and this week. Uh, today, uh, no, sorry, tomorrow, the birthdays of Marilyn Gordon and Nicole Boulter. Nicole, where are you? Uh, where are, there you are. Happy birthday to you for tomorrow. <laughs> Later in the week, uh, Peter Lewis, Mary Ann MacDonald, David Deglon, Anne Aitkin. I'm not sure, is Anne here? I can't see you. No, don't think so. Uh, Tyreek April, Keenan Rennie, and Charles McHelm. We pray for all those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, that God would be with them on their special day and into the year ahead with love and strength and guidance. And we also have uh, an anniversary to celebrate, Lyle and Adrian Abrahams. Uh, are you both here or are you through there? <laughs> here we are. Congratulations to the two of you. Pray for you and for your family that God will continue to be with you, to guide you and bless you into the year ahead. There's quite a lot of things on the screen. I'm going to try and make this um, shorter than the sermon, if possible. <laughs> um, first of all, Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school, show us what you've been doing. We can gather the Sunday school together and come and show us what you've been doing today. I can see you've been making things. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Luca. Oh, that's lovely. We'll wait till everybody else comes up and then we're going to show this to everybody because they're going to like this. Yeah, nice. Hello, Emily. Oh, you've got a lovely one there. Wow. Right, can you hold these up for everyone to see? Because these are beautiful. Here's a big one here. This says... God purifies my heart like fire refines gold. Isn't that beautiful? And you've got one as well. Right, whose was this? Um, where's Luca? He's gone. There we are. Where's he gone? There we are. That's yours. You can have that back. There we are. And you can have that one back. So several of you have done these. God purifies my heart like a fire refines gold. He makes us better and better. That's good. Okay, and what else have we got here? Right. Tell us about this one, Alex. Right. This is you and what's going on in that picture. Do you want to hold it up? All hold your pictures up. Right. I like the nice sunny pictures. Yeah, excellent. And what's, what's going on in these pictures? What's happening? <laughs> Jesse, you can tell me <laughs> what's happening in this picture. Oh, 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 right. The paper is yellow. You might have noticed the paper is yellow because they're good as gold. And we know that. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Blake? The higher age in Sunday school, we learned about pray and meditation. What did, you, what did you learn about prayer and meditation? So, like meditation in meditation, it's also a part of uh, prayer. That's lovely, isn't it? So that the and prayer stands for pause, rejoice, ask, and heal. Uh, that's really good. Thank you. 
What a lovely lesson. Thank you to the older ones. Thank you for all the age groups. Thank you. Yes, hello. Right. Thank you, Sunday School. Please give them a big hand. And you can go and sit down again. Now, just quickly through um, a few other things on there. First of all, the magazine deadline is tomorrow. If you're going to submit an article uh, for this, this edition of the magazine, please get it to Glynis by tomorrow at the latest. And then by next week, knowing Glynis, it will all be ready and you'll be able to collect your magazines from church. Um, we've got a meeting after church over in the hall for the feeding team. That's those who are involved in the, the monthly Sunday lunch feeding team. Uh, please go over to the hall. I'll come over as quickly as I can after the end of the service and we'll just have a meeting to discuss a couple of things. This week, we have meetings for our pastoral networkers. Um, it's Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock or Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Come to one or the other. You don't need to come to both. It's the same meeting twice. But come to whichever is most convenient for you. Uh, if you are a pastoral networker, please come to one of those meetings. Glynis has already emailed you with the details, uh, but this is just a reminder. Uh, many of you will remember Kate Elvidge. Uh, she hasn't been in church for a month or two because she's not been well, but unfortunately uh, she died during the week and her funeral is going to take place on Friday at 10 o'clock here. I know that her family would be greatly strengthened and supported by your presence. So if you would be able to come to that service and give her family that support, that prayerful, loving support, then I know they would appreciate it very much when we commit our dear sister Kate into God's care. This is the last call for those who are interested in confirmation. Our confirmation class starts on Friday. Because most of the candidates are members of the youth group, uh, we're going to have it on Friday evenings when the youth group normally meet. So it's going to be fortnightly on Fridays starting this week. So that's 7 till 8.30 fortnightly. And then we'll have normal youth in between. Uh, our men's fellowship is going to start up for the first time since before COVID. That's going to be a week Saturday, Saturday the 27th, 8.30 over in the Blue Room. All men are very welcome. Um, there's no charge. Just come along. We'll have an informal time of fellowship together and we'll talk about what we want to do as a fellowship. And it'll, after that, it will meet monthly uh, on the fourth Sunday of every month at the same time. Our young family services have uh, carried on right the way through COVID, um, providing a monthly service for young children in the absence of Sunday school. But now that Sunday school has started again, as you may have noticed, um, we have to decide whether there is a future for these young family services. Um, if we do continue with them, then they're going to be for the very youngest children, the ones who are really sort of at the very bottom end of Sunday school and even pre-Sunday school. But we need to know that there is a demand for it before we carry on and plan them. We don't want to plan something if there's no real demand. So please, can you speak to Joy Rushworth or to me if you think you would like these services to continue and that you intend to bring a child or grandchild or great-grandchild along to these services? I think, think we're really aiming it at uh, the under fives. So if you would like there to be a service for the under fives once a month, please speak to us. Otherwise, we'll just stop it. There's no point doing something if people don't really want it. After church, as always, there is tea in the hall, so please don't run away, don't go straight home, enjoy the fellowship and a cup of tea or coffee in the hall. And all the, as always, there is the opportunity for prayer with a lay minister. If you would like Mary to pray with you confidentially, then please make your way to the Lady Chapel and she will pray with you there at the end of the service. And there is one more thing which didn't make it onto the screen, and that is that this week is the meeting of the AWF, uh, 10 o'clock on Thursday. There is a quiz. All members of AWF are welcome, of course, and all those who are not members are welcome, and you don't even have to be a woman. Uh, 10 o'clock on Thursday, AWF quiz. Okay, please stand. As we prepare to go out into the world, we pray together. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 
God bless Africa, guard our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.